Exporting animations from Comsol Multiphysics is a great way to show visually engaging results in presentations, on the web, or for standalone purposes. This tutorial will show you how to export quality animations. We will go over the study steps that precipitate animations, and then explain the various options, settings, and best practices for creating animations. For this demonstration, we have opened up a multi-body dynamics model. The reciprocating engine. Before we get into the animation creation, I want to point out the types of studies you'd need to create and run an animation. Time dependent, eigenfrequency, frequency domain, as well as parametric function or material sweeps. The study run in this model is time dependent from 0 to 0 0.16 seconds with a time step of 0.4 milliseconds. This gives us a total of 401 values. When we go to the settings window for the displacement group, we can see that we can scroll through all of these different values. To start the process in creating an animation, we can simply click the animation button in the top right corner of our screen, which gives us two options, player or file. For now, we will select player, which produces the file in the graphics window. Note that this video is created with Comsol Multiphysics version 5.2a. If you have an older version, the selection might look different for you. Producing the animation in the graphics window through the player is generally good practice to get a feeling for how your animation looks before exporting it. Comsol Multiphysics automatically produces an animation with some default settings. So let's go through these. We have the scene section where you select which plot group to show. We'll leave this as displacement. The target section lets you choose between producing the animation to a player or a file. And we'll get into producing to a file a little bit later on. The animation editing section is where we choose the results to show. In this case, we want stored solutions to loop over time. And we'll start with all for the time selection, which is all 401 values. In the frame section, we can select whether we want to show all of the frames or a certain number of frames. The default value when creating an animation will select number of frames and 25 frames. But as we saw earlier, when we produce this, it's very hard to see what's actually happening. We need to select more frames to get a better animation. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if we click all, this will produce all 401 frames. Comsol Multiphysics will generate the animation. This is going to take a little bit, so we will jump ahead to save time. After about two and a half minutes, we have now created a smoother animation, but it's not necessarily very practical since it took so long. The most difficult part of creating animations will be figuring out a good balance between time and quality. So we could go ahead and produce maybe 100 frames, but there are some other tricks as well. Notice how this animation repeats itself a few times. Instead of creating an animation that has four rotations, we could create an animation that just of one rotation, knowing that it will repeat itself automatically. Let's loop the second rotation we can see that it begins at around 0 0.0428. And let's see, this ends at around 0 0.0696. We can go back into the animation editing section, and instead of choosing all from the time selection, we can select from list. The time selection shows a list of all the different times that we can choose from. Let's scroll down to point zero four, uh, let's say three, two. I'm actually cheating here knowing when it starts and ends. And then scroll down to point zero six nine six. 
And if we hold the shift button and click, all of the times in between are selected. Then in the playing section, we can click repeat so that the animation will repeat in the graphics window once it's finished. And since the animation was playing a little bit slowly before, we can speed it up by playing each frame for 0 0.01 seconds instead of 0 0.1 seconds. So we'll be moving at 100 frames per second instead of 10 frames per second. Compared to the full time selection, this took 30 seconds instead of two and a half minutes. Now, as you can see, there's a seamless transition between the different loops. Now that we have an animation that we like, let's export it to a file. In the target section, we can select file and the settings window changes a little bit, but not too much. We can minimize the animation editing since we already know what we want and take a look at the output section. We can export this as a movie or an image sequence, which is a series of images. And we can select to export as a GIF, a flash file or an AVI. We'll uh, export as a GIF. Finally, we need to select a file name so we can browse to the desktop and enter in reciprocating engine. Finally, we have frames per second, the frame rate. Similar to the player options before, we can choose the frame rate for our animation. And in this case, instead of selecting how many seconds to display each frame, we say how many frames we want to display per second. So we'll leave ours at 100 like it was before. Uh, and this will again depend on your specific animation and how big of the change in each frame is. But usually somewhere between 20 and 60 frames per second is sufficient. Next, we have the frames section. We need to set the animation dimensions. Best practices for this is to eliminate empty space around the animation and therefore approximate the dimensions based on the animation. The default is 640 pixels by 480 pixels, which is a four by three aspect ratio. Uh, and this fits our animation relatively well. So we'll leave that aspect ratio alone and click to lock it. Generally speaking, 640 by 480 is a little bit small for an animation to be produced. However, another best practice is to export the animation at 640 by 480 or similar to see how it looks and then export at a higher resolution once you know you have the correct framing. For instance, I can export this as is and then when we look at our desktop we can see that there's a bit of empty space around the edges so we could probably zoom in a little bit before exporting again. Then we can set the dimensions to export at a higher resolution let's say 1920 by 1440 Notice how the height changed because the aspect ratio is locked. And this will give us a higher quality animation, although it will take longer. Finally, there are two more sections, the layout section, where we can choose to include options uh, such as the title, the color legend, grid, axis orientation, and the Comsol logo. And you can also choose to select the font size, which is only affected when you have text and the background color, which is either a custom color or the current graphics window background. We also have advanced options. For instance, we can synchronize the scales between frames 
This is a useful feature to decide if you want the entire animation to have the same scale, or if you want each frame to have a separate unit scale. Let's choose to ignore the layout, and now we can export our final animation. As mentioned before, this is going to take longer than the first one because it is a higher quality. This is another case where you want to choose between having a high quality video and how much time you have to create such an animation. As you can see from these animations, there are advantages to exporting larger, higher quality animations, but at the same time, the law of diminishing returns applies here. Remember that while we used a time-dependent study here, animations can be created in similar fashion for multiple study types. You should now have a firm grasp on how to export animations from Compsol Multiphysics to suit your needs with a few best practices to keep in mind.